this must be a lot, very overwhelming and very exciting to be here for you. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's just fun to get to meet the fans one on one. So for me, that's just, uh, this is just cool. So season three B is exciting because Lydia, we now know what the whole deal is with her. So how does that banshee power affect her this second part of the season? I think her banshee power is affected in the sense that she's able to be sort of a credible source now amongst the scooby Doo pack, as I call them. Um, and you continue to see Styles and Lydia's relationship grow as, uh, as friends and, and calm down people, to establish a friendship and, uh, and see you know, how they can help each other out. And uh, Styles could, might get into some trouble throughout the season, so he might really need their help. <laughs> as he always does. Right, right, so that's, that's sort of the Banshee connection is, uh, is just the aid this season for Lydia. And Jeff mentioned that she might be helping Scott with those powers as well. She does. She's she's like she's the the problem solver this season, and it's uh, it's fun that I'm not. No one's yelling at me. I'm not yelling at anyone. She's very peaceful for Lydia this season, for the most part. She also has a, an interesting connection with Peter. Is that explored a little more? It is. It is explored more, and uh, I I it, it fascinates me why people find it so interesting. <laughs> It's really funny. Like you just don't really know what people are going to respond to, and I love, I love the character of Peter. And Ian's a great guy to work with, and so it's just so funny. Like Ian and I find it so funny. We're just like, we said three words to each other. How do people come up with a storyline around that? But they did, and so, so yeah, there'll be more of more of the banter back and forth. It's a mystery. You have to figure out like, what is it? What is, what is it? With? It's so fun. Maybe it's like a chemistry thing. I have no idea. I know it's so funny to me, but yeah. There'll be, there'll be a lot more uh, pity yet to come. What about Lydia and Aiden? Now that he has some redemption to do, where does she fit in into that? Oh, he is redeeming her all over the place. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that, you know, it's funny and how he has to control his temper throughout the season. He's a little bit of a hothead, and she's always kind of keeping him in check. So it's very much, you know, I think it's safe to say I wear the pants in the relationship um, for Lydia and Aiden. So, so yeah, she's always just like snapping her man back in check and, uh, and telling him what to say, when to say it, how to say it kind of thing. So yeah, that's, that's the relationship. That sounds fun. <laughs> it is fun. I mean, I don't think I'm that way in my real life. So she's got a lot of girl power on her. <laughs> yeah. What about Lydia and Allison's relationship? How is that evolving the rest of the season? I think we're definitely, it's almost like she's manning her own group and I'm manning my group. And it's almost like we're like, are you good? I'm good, are you good? Are you, okay, we're cool. Like, it's sort of that where we're, you know, we're after the same ultimate goal, the same end goal, but we have to physically stay apart to sort of get there. We, ha we don't have a lot of scenes together per se. Yeah. And is there a moment that stands out for you? Uh, during your journey with Tina Wolf so far? 3B. Um, just the, throughout the whole Teen Wolf journey so far, not necessarily 3B. Uh, my whole Teen Wolf journey so far, my memory, my memory is on camera or off camera? Anything at all. I just, I think, I think Teen Wolf's a really special show because, a lo you know, a lot of actors will say this, that they always had one project where the stars aligned and there'll be nothing like it. Now, I, th I'm, I would hope there'll be great memories to come for me as an actor, but there'll be nothing like this, and that's okay. I mean, this is this is the place that I know will always be in my heart, and for, for the boys, like Tyler and Dylan, this was their college, because, you know, they were they were just got out of high school. I had just graduated college when I, I booked the show during college, and then, you know, so it, it, it was my first adult job, and I was so spoiled and sheltered and lucky to be able to transition into my dream job right out of college. I mean, it was during a time where the recession had just hit and let alone to have a job and a job that I actually wanted was just mind boggling to me. So that's, those are the memories I personally take away from Team Wolf. And a moment from a 3B? Moment for 3B, I would say like 15, 16, 17, 18. Around there, that's where a lot of sh shakaka starts to hit the fan. <laughs> So I think those uh, those are the moments that stand out for me. I can't say what they are because, of course, I would be ruining it. But um, it's 
it's always that last third of the season that really starts to just pick up. All right, we'll be on the lookout for that. And one final question for you. Do you have a message for the fan as they get ready to watch this second part of the season? A message for the fan as they get ready to watch the second part of the season? I would say keep your mind open to the idea of the Teen Wolf world and what it is to be, a t to be in Teen Wolf. I think that you're going to learn about Japanese immigrants with American history and it really takes a pause on the on the lead character's intentions and starts to focus towards Kira and her family. And uh, it's really nice that it's almost like, you know, we got picked up for season four and if we have a season five, this is almost like our midway through the series. And so we take a pause to sort of create the rest of the world around us. And I think that's, I think that's fun.